Tessa with Hip Over 50. So today I'm going to talk about those of you who may want to bring your furry friend, your furry four-legged friend over to the UK with you. You know, that's your special pet. Your Actually, they allow dogs, cats, and ferrets. So there you go. So <laughs> there is a, there's definitely a protocol to it, and that is what this video is all about, telling you what to expect if you want to bring your pet over to the UK. So I'm Tessa with Hip Over 50. This channel is about my moving abroad to England in midlife and my experiences, my the knowledge I've gained here and the challenges and everything else, all, <laughs> all of the above. So maybe it will be helpful to you if you are thinking of coming over here for a visit um, or to move here permanently. So are you wondering if you can bring your dog or cat to the UK? Yes, you can, if you follow the rules. And there are quite a few. Um, these rules apply, as I said, to bringing a dog, cat, or ferret into the UK. I don't know how the ferret fits in with the whole dog-cat scenario. Most people don't have ferrets as pets, but they must have decided to categorize them in the same group. So the main thing is that your pet can't travel into the UK with you. They have to come via an approved route or via an approved carrier. So in other words, you can't bring Fido or Fluffy on the plane with you. And that may upset a few of you because I know it's, you know, it's not much fun when you have to put your pet into a carrier and not see them for some time and not know how they are doing. But let's find out what the rules are and then we can talk about that. So the main rules are your prep will have to enter the UK via an approved route or carrier. That's number one. Number two, they have to be microchipped. Number three, they have to have a pet passport or a health certificate. And a, either one, depending on what country you're coming from. They've got to be vaccinated against rabies, of course. And they may need a tapeworm treatment if they are a dog. So let's start with the approved route stuff. So there are specific approved routes and travel companies that you need to use if you want to bring your pet into England, Wales, or Scotland. And there are some exceptions. For example, you don't need to use an approved route if you're traveling from Ireland to any country in Great Britain. So just, I know it's a little confusing. Great Britain is basically England, Scotland, and Wales. The United Kingdom is England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. So if you're traveling from Ireland to any country in Great Britain, you are allowed to bring your pet in via a private plane or boat. So that might be an option for some of you, um, especially if you have family in Ireland or you were planning on going to Ireland anyway. Um, and your pet can also travel with another person if you authorize it in writing. So I've got all of the links for those approved carriers and routes. I did a pretty extensive blog post on hipover50.com. So just go there, Google pets or search for pets on my website and this blog post will come up. So number two step to bringing your pet over to the UK is to have the microchip. So they have to be microchipped at the same time or before their rabies vaccination and it has to be done by an approved vet, nurse, or microchip professional and that microchip number needs to go on their pet passport or health certificate. So number three, that pet passport or health certificate. Well, which one do you need? It depends on where you're coming from. So there are something called part one companies and those are most EU countries and then a few more. Again, the link is in my blog post. And if you're traveling from those countries, they will accept a pet passport or a Great British pet health certificate. However, if you are traveling from part two countries, which include the US, Australia, and Canada, then you are only allowed to use a pet passport. I'm sorry, only allowed to use a health certificate, not a pet passport. I told you it was complicated. So, and then if your country isn't listed under a part one or part two country, then there are other additional rules. So number four on the step of bringing your pet into the UK is to get them a rabies vaccination. And that's a pretty no brainer, right? So they have to be at least 12 weeks old before they're vaccinated against rabies and they must be vaccinated before travel to Great Britain. And your pet, of course, as I mentioned earlier, must be microchipped at the same time as they get the rabies vaccination. And then once they've had that vaccination, you have to wait 21 days before they can come into Great Britain. 
And yeah, of course you knew this was coming. Different rules apply if you are not in a part one or part two country for the rabies vaccination. Then last but not least, if you're bringing your doggy in with you, he needs or she needs to get a tapeworm treatment. And that has to be recorded in their pet passport or their health certificate no less than 24 hours and no more than five days before you plan to, before they plan to enter the Great Britain. And if you don't follow these rules to the T, your pet may be put into quarantine for up to four months. So please don't let that happen. That wouldn't be very nice for either one of you. Um, so I think that it is a little bit complicated to bring your pet in. Um, and there are a few more rules actually. <laughs> so your pet shouldn't arrive more than five days before you do your own, you know, the owner. Or there's a whole new set of rules if they do arrive five days more before you do. Um, you'll also need to fill out a declaration that you're not planning on selling or transferring ownership of your pet, as if you would. Well, of course, they're trying to discourage people from bringing animals in here just for, you know, to sell them, um, which is very good. So again, these rules only apply to dogs, cats, and ferrets. So if you have a gerbil, a hamster, um, a marmot or whatever, then different rules apply. So... I do give a lot of general guidance and a lot of great links on my blog post about bringing pets into the UK. And one other thing that, aside from bringing your pet into Ireland, or from Ireland into Great Britain, which is one workaround to using the approved travel route or carrier, another option is to bring your, I found a, an option to bring your pet in through France. So there is an, a pet carrier, courier, not a carrier, a courier, a pet courier that will bring your pet in, personally bring them in with them from France into the UK. Um, it's not something that I've ever used myself, but I did happen to find them when I was looking for research on this topic. And they seem to be, you know, they seem to have got some really great reviews. So that might be something to check out. Again, that link is in my blog post. So last but not least, if you have a dog breed that's banned in the UK, well then you can't bring them in at all. So that would be a pit bull terrier, um, a Japanese Tosa, a Dogo Argentino, or a Fila Brasileiro. Apologies for my horrible accent. Um, so there you go. Those are all the details on what to consider if you're wanting to bring your little four-legged friend over for um, either an extended visit into the UK or to, if you're planning on moving here permanently, those are the rules. And like I said, go to hipover50.com, search for pet, and you will find the article and all the links with it, go with it. So thank you so much for watching. Um, of course, put any comments or questions below. I'm always happy to answer those. And again, I really appreciate you watching these videos. It, it's fun to make them, and I hope they are very helpful for you. And I hope to see you on the next video. Bye for now.